Alright guys, it's Simon here, and we're playing Socrates Jones, Pro Philosopher. Alright, so chapter 2, an old friend appears. Let's see what's gonna happen next. Okay, Dad, regress. <laughs> uh, to deteriorate to an early state. Okay, fallacy. A logical flaw. Look at this, the game... I mean, through, through this dialogue, the game is teaching you new words. I don't know if you guys know these words. To regress is to go backwards, basically. A fallacy is a, a logical flaw, a mistake, I guess. Uh, I can't believe I'm being quizzed on vocabulary by my daughter. And qualification? Um, come on, Dad. Something you need to qualify, like a law degree? <laughs> uh, close enough. Can we stop now? Well, that depends. Promise not to stumble all of yourself like last time. Hey, I didn't do that badly in the end. I earned all the style points. <laughs> yeah, you were at least smart enough to not and not to accept Euthyphro's ideas. Though I could have done without the holy pun. Nah, no, it's great. Puns are great. But I'm trying to keep our spirits up. I'm allowed a bad pun or two. Uh, and this is your way of doing that. <laughs> Arbiter, who's next? There are many philosophers in the intelligible realm. One, however, has come forth with the claim that he knows you personally. Knows me? Yes. But that makes no sense. How could he possibly know you? I don't know. Maybe one of my old fraternity friends became a famous philosopher without me knowing? One of your friends? I doubt that. Yo, burn! Well met, Socrates, my old friend and colleague. I believe I can help you on your quest to find the nature of morality. Great, thanks. Um, actually, I don't believe we've ever met before. <laughs> what? Come now, you must remember me. Nope, nope, you're Greek and I don't know you. Look at his face. Surely your name comes to mind. Um, <laughs> Dumbledore. Protagoras, how could you have forgotten? We debated in Athens millennia ago. No, that was another guy, actually. Let's just go to Wikipedia. Protagoras. Um, was a pre-Socratic Greek philosopher and is numbered as one of the sophists by Plato. Huh. Yeah, but, you know, Plato. Okay, Plato called him a... a sophist. In his dialogue, Protagoras Plato credits him with having invented the role of the professional sophist. He is also believed to have created a major controversy during ancient times through his statement that man is the measure of all things. This idea was revolutionary for the time and contrasted with other philosoph philosophical doctrines that claimed the universe was based on something objective outside the hu human influence. Alright, so man is the measure of all things. That's basically his contribution to philosophy, you know, as opposed to, for example, gods are the, are the source of, you know, morality. Alright, we'll listen to him talk about it in the game, but I've never even been to Athens. Are you not the great thinker Socrates? No, well, to be fair, I am a Socrates. Enough, even if you have sadly forgotten me, old friend, I will be happy to share my lessons with you. Well then, let's us hold our discussion together in our own persons, making a trial of the truth and of ourselves. Simple illumination would demonstrate morality can only come from one place. Your conversation with Euthyphro has demonstrated that morality does not come from the gods. And clearly morality does not originate from the rocks and the trees. Thus the only possible source of morality is human valuing. I actually agree with this, but let's just keep going. As you can see, man is truly the measure of all things. Man is not the measure of all things, although morality is defined by humans, I think. Anyway, let's just, let's just listen to what they have to say first. I hope my lesson was informative, my old friend. Hold on. There's a soundtrack for this game? Never mind. I told you Pro Pythagoras. <laughs> Isn't his name Protagoras? It is. Pythagoras. I don't know you. Show that, at least he's being polite. You don't know how that would change if he discovers you're an accountant. 
Hey, what's wrong with being an accountant? I mean, it's a perfectly acceptable profession. Accountants are good. Well, Socrates Jones, what do you think? Has Protagoras found the nature of morality? Is he trying to bait me? Yes. I think I'd like to ask a few questions before I make that decision. Certainly, my friend, ask away. Alright. Simple illumination would demonstrate morality can only come from one place. How? Why can't it come from more places? <laughs> Never mind. Ask for clarification? What do you mean by that? When all other possible sources of morality are eliminated, the one that remains is indubitably true. That's not very f philosophical. I mean, you're assuming that you can eliminate an infinite number of possibilities. Like, how many possible places can morality come from? Uh, anything? I mean, over there? I mean, from that tree? From that rock? From the sky? Like, how do you eliminate all of them? Uh, never mind. This is how I intend to go about proving my conclusion. Uh, press for backing. Can you back that up? Give me time, my old friend. Alright, I'm getting to it. Uh, question relevance. How is this related to your conclusion? I am describing the method that I will use to prove my thesis. Alright. Your face is ugly! Alright, never mind. Let's not do that. Your conversation with you for sure has demonstrated that morality doesn't come from the gods. Fair enough. And clearly morality does not originate from the rocks and the trees. How do you know? Maybe it does. Why? What do you mean by that? Morality is not derived from nature. How do you know? So, what makes you say that? The flow of the river, the movement of the clouds... Such things do nothing for our judgement. What about animals? What about the circumference of the moon? Also irrelevant. Oh, good to know. <laughs> I knew that suggestion so it was ridiculous. Um, press for backing. What evidence do you have to back that up? Being a system that governs the actions of humans, there's little reason to believe that morality comes from things that grow around us. Why? Gravity governs the actions of humans, and gravity doesn't come from humans, you know what I mean? And thus, in this case, I believe the burden of proof lies on you. Um, unless you can provide some evidence showing that morality does come from rocks and trees, I think Protagoras' assumption stands. Alright, okay then. Uh, question relevance. How is that related to conclusion? The elimination of nature whittles down the possible sources of morality immensely. No, but it, 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 it does. The rocks and the trees are not the only things in nature. I mean, physics, I guess, is part of nature. Like, chemistry is part of nature. Uh, okay, next. Thus, the only possible source of morality is human valuing. Ask for clarification. Human valuing, what does that mean? My apologies, you see, morality is a matter of preference. As a result, it is different for each person. Therefore, whatever an individual believes to be right, is right. No, because people disagree all the time. Uh, okay, statement updated. Whatever any individual believes is right, is right for that individual. Except not. Principle packing. What evidence do you have to support that? That's the only remaining option, my friend. No, it's not, bro. Is it not enough? Hold on, Protagoras. Yes, friend. Look, I understand what you are going for here, but I can't help but feel that an argument based entirely on elimination as a bird is weak. I mean, no matter how many sources you eliminate, there is always the possibility that there are others you have overlooked. If I am to accept your argument, I would like it to be supported by something more. Indeed, I was just thinking the same thing. Yes, I suppose you have a point. You are just as insightful as I remember, Socrates. I, I, I said that ages ago. How do you eliminate infinite possibilities? I said that. Very well, then we approach this lesson from a different angle. When it comes down to it, morality is a matter of values. No. Morality is also a matter of necessity. 
I mean, never mind. Let's just keep going. However, different people form different values. They do. There are no things upon which everyone can agree. Kind of true. It would be arrogant to presume that any position is wrong. Actually, no, it's not true. We agree there's gravity. We agree there's gravity because none of us float into the air. Like, we all stick to the ground. We can agree with that, right? Everybody has to agree with that. If you don't agree with that, then you're crazy. You know what I mean? If you, like, if you disagree with gravity, that doesn't actually work. It doesn't actually work. If we're arrogant to presume any position is wrong, thus arrogant. What does arrogance have to do with this? Uh, thus, we can only conclude that our morality is entirely relative. And there we go. Huh, how interesting. <laughs> I like this argument. It's bad, Ari. I just pointed out like three different flaws with it. It says I can do whatever I want. But that's not what he's saying. At least I hope not. Actually, that is what he's saying. Well, Socrates, I, once again, I'd like to ask a few questions, of course. When it comes down to it, morality is a matter of values. Ask for clarification? What do you mean by that? By values, I mean the personal preference of individuals. For example, one may hold certain actions in very high esteem, noble sacrifice, for example, while holding nothing but disgust for others, like wanton thievery. If you are truly confused, I recommend you check a dictionary. No, you're confused. Back that up. I don't believe I need to, my friend. You should do. The definition of morality is values which distinguish between right and wrong, is it not? That's a dictionary. So I think my statement stands firm. A dictionary is not philosophy. A dictionary is just commonly accepted meanings for words. Okay. Um, next. However, different people form different values. Ask for clarification. Different values? Yes, people believe in different things. They have different preferences. You have to admit that. That's pretty clear. Alright. There are no things upon which everyone can agree. Ask for clarification. What do you mean by that? Not only may people's values differ, they may lead them to making entirely contradictory conclusions. It happens. Much like the gods of Euphyphro. Um, backing. I find it hard to believe. Is that so? You remember our old Athenian democracy, do you not? Uh, sure, why not? <laughs> well then, surely you must also remember that on most issues, people disagreed on what was the right way to vote. Some thought our penalties for crimes were too harsh, others, while others thought our penalties were not harsh enough. Why, as you know, it was even argued that you should be put to death for speaking out. Wait, what? <laughs> Speech penalty added to the idea slate. There are no things upon which everyone can agree. Speech penalty. According to Protagoras, some people believe that those who speak out should be put to death. Hmm. It would be arrogant to presume that any position is wrong. Ask for clarification. What do you mean by that? It is not our place to decide if another's moral perspective is wrong. Um, press for backing. Why would it be arrogant? Come now. Do you really believe that we have a right to say that one who believes that eating beef is immoral is more correct than one who is against eating chicken? Yeah. Yeah, because, you know, for an equal amount of beef, you require a lot more resources to raise the cow than it takes to raise a chicken. So, you know, eating beef is actually consuming more resources than, than eating chicken for the same amount of nutrients you, you get out of it. So, yeah, it is. It is kind of immoral because you're you're wasting resources at the expense of other people. Beef eaters, I'm looking at you. Wait, what? <laughs> That's a really rather silly example coming from an academic. As you can see, there's no way we can say that one moral is system is better than another. I guess. Uh, question relevance. How is this related to your conclusion? That's a linchpin of my argument, really. As morality is subjective, we cannot assess others' opinions as a consequence. It also shows the consequence of the previous premise. That strikes me as more reason. Thus, we can only conclude that morality is entirely relative. Uh, ask for clarification. What do you mean by that? 
but relative to the individual, I mean that each person may decide for himself what is right and what is wrong. It doesn't work though, because once, once you have, I mean, once you have people kind of interacting with each other, either cooperating or competing with each other, then you then you end up with a disagreement. I mean, if if what I believe is right is different from what you believe is right. And it causes us to come into conflict. You know, we're both trying to do something, and we're getting in each other's way because we believe different things. Then we have to either negotiate or fight. You know, we we have to decide between us what is right and wrong. We can't just let it all be relative because, unless we just kind of stay away from each other, and everybody stays away from everyone else. Otherwise, you have to come into contact with other people, and then you have to kind of negotiate these things. To have to come to some sort of agreed, you know, way of doing things. I mean, otherwise you, you can't do anything with anyone because you don't agree on anything, right? I believe the context should help eliminate my point.